Hey guys, Dave from Nardarchy, for Nards, by Nards, hang out with this nerd. Nardark is Ted. This D&D player finds a luck blade. Not so lucky for this dungeon master. Jump down to the description below where you can sign up for Nerdarchy the newsletter, get weekly gaming tips, as well as learn how to game with us. As always, the GM91 will be in the description so you can check out their original post. And essentially, uh, what Kaylin has in their game is this. A luck blade was giving out, so they acquired multiple wishes. And one of the, his players was very clever in how to use that wish. So instead of trying to up stats or, or, or make something new, they wanted to use the wish to alter existing magic items. So first off, luck blade, blah, 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 everything else. The sword has 1d4 minus one charges. One charge can be used to cast wish from it. It can only use a charge once a day. It does not regain any charges. I, I ugh, on the wish spell. I, I avoid all, all things. Yeah, I'll give you a luck blade. It's got zero charges on it. Have fun with it. I, I don't I don't like the wish spells. You don't like wishes. You're scared. Gotcha. I'm not. It's not scared. They they have the ability to do such massive changes to a game, and you've you know I've I've heard and seen horror stories of DMs who try to sit down and nitpick every little thing, and I've seen players who are so anal that their wish is like three typed pages long for a sentence. <laughs> So, right, so in both cases, it's kind of wrong, in my opinion. Yes. So the player character got access to the Luck Blade, and rather than, once he's been told what Wish actually does, found the loophole of, well, can I reword a magic item? So they went and found the tomes, specifically the physical ones, because the character's playing a monk, and reworded it so that instead of regaining the magic in a century... It gets it back in 48 hours. So every six days, technically, he can read the books again. Utterly, utterly crazy. This is where you get to the point. And when we say, like, all the manuals that increase your ability stats. Yeah. So here's the thing. One, he did not have these books. He did not have the manuals when he got the Luck Blade. He said he wanted to quest for them, and the DM okayed it. One, you know, you're letting... You, you as the GM, have basically given out these magic items... So what are you going to do? You're you're letting them you're letting them get them. Two, now you're talking about a wish spell and doing something that is not listed on what you can do with a wish. Well, it specifically says anytime you basically don't go by, you know, what's listed under a wish, what you can expect is fate to twist your wish. And this is where the DM is going to lawyer what can actually be done. And there may be consequences. So you might be able to achieve something beyond the scope of the above examples. State your wish to the DM as precisely as possible. The DM has great latitude in ruling what occurs in such an instance. The greater the wish, the greater the likelihood that something goes wrong. The spell might simply fail. The effect you desire might only be partially achieved. Or you might suffer some unforeseen consequence as a result of how you worded the wish. For instance, so the idea is, you know, after 100 years, it can be reused, right? That That's the idea. Mm -hmm. So I want to be able to use this book again in 48 hours instead of 100 years. So in 48 hours, you get teleported 100 years into to the, the future. future. Well, precise, it would actually be more like uh, 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 99 years and like, you know, 353 uh, yeah. days. I might even say, you know what? I'll I'll applaud your 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 creativity. I won't take you 100 years in the future because that's going to remove you from my plot line. You're going to get an extra use of the book, but you've used your wish. Your stats have been in, ha, have been increased by two. Now you can use the book again. Your stats will get increased by another two, and then the book will regain its magic again in 100 years. That's the way I would take it. A powerful use of wish. The charge on a luck blade. It's not like a, a player character is casting wish as a, as a you know 18th level wizard or what have you. They're using something from a magic item that I've allowed them to have. I'm not going to super lawyer this. Sure, there you go. You've used your wish. Spend your next you know 48 hours over the next six days and increase your stats again. Voila. That's the way I would do it. I think in the case of this, like you kind of like because it's a wish and you're using it strange, is like you need to let the player write it out. I said, write it out. I want a sentence. This is what you're speaking, so I can see. And you know, as a GM, it's your job to lawyer a wish if it's being abused. 
And you might do some things depending on how they word it. It'd be like, oh, you know what? The book is swapped. You know, it, you, you have a book to read and it'll do what you wanted to do and you'll get everything you want. It's not the same book. And there's something subtly different about it and they kind of pick up on it, but it, it still works. The owner comes looking for it. You know, and that's the other thing. Any consequence that you kind of would want to lay out, you want to make it interesting so that it creates more story and more adventures for your players. It's not just to punish them and be punitive because there, there's nothing really fun for anyone with that. And especially if you, the GM, has made a mistake. As as a GM who has given out too many magic items, has given out too many rewards, it is possible to create a situation like like Kalen has done here that you have an un, unkillable PC. Truth be told, this this character is a monk. It's got its stats like crazy now. It's immortal because it's a 20th level monk, so they will literally live forever. So how do you deal with something like this? There's a couple things that can be done. One, okay, this this character has now passed the ken of mortal kind. A deity, a literal, literal god, comes down and says, you no longer belong on this plane of existence. We are escorting you to the realms of the divine. You just got a promotion. <laughs> <laughs> it might not be considered a god. It might not, you know, it might get some worshippers in some kind of time. Elevate that character to some kind of, you know, divine status. Give it something in the world because that player did something awesome and got one over on you as the DM. But that character is no longer suitable for play in a regular game. Those books need to be whisked away so that other characters are not sitting there going through the same the same process over the course of, you know, oh, every week I just become stronger. It, it, it's not within the scope of what D&D is supposed to do. And it's no longer fun when it's not a challenge. My other thought was on this is in third edition, there were outsiders uh, from the plane, plane of law, basically, that would show up when mortals were breaking the rules of the universe. This might be one of those times it may warrant it. Uh, there could be other things, like depending on how the wording of the wish is, they might have to keep reading these books over and over again to keep refreshing those, those ability stats that they gained. So that you can alter things that way. There could be you know orders in the world that are against unnatural things that now you've kind of become one by using this magic and you know they're hunting you down i don't really think like those stats are going like depending on how high he let them get like literally how many books did you really let him find at, at that point like that's the real problem because well, you I mean, only had so many wishes it, it it sounds like he got at least the the book of strength and the book of decks and you give a monk, you know, or give anybody a book of decks and their armor class has the ability to go to ridiculous. And if you allowed him to get into the 40s or 50s, then you've got a character who is literally beyond what any typical mortal can do with armor class and the ability to hit. And then once you, once you stack on that ridiculous number to damage per strike it's a monk so it's getting a lot of attacks per round all of them getting this ridiculous damage bonus it's a recipe for you know ridiculous combat abilities so that's not even the real problem the real problem would be if it's only one character in the party because he might be ridiculous but what about the other players you know eventually you're the, you're going to be the last man standing if the idea is you're going to have to like keep throwing threats against the party to challenge this one character. Really, like, after you get to a certain point, everything is kind of, like, broken. So you can't real. There's no going back. Well, that, that's, that's why. That's why your suggestion of, well, maybe you should just remove this character from the thing. That's great. You've ru rules lawyered your way out of the game. So, yes, you... You've, you've won D&D. You won. This character is, is removed. Come and play something else. You know, you can you can make the next character have some significant magic items as compensation for for that. But you've now learned, all right, I can't allow either wishes in my game or I can't allow that type of wish to, to happen again because 
it is game breaking. It's something that you've physically seen at your table, you know, and you're unable to deal with it as a DM. And he does say, or she, I, I don't know which, you know, says that they're unable to deal with the character because it's gotten so powerful. What do you do? And, you know, this could also just be a simple conversation outside of the game. Being like, this isn't working for me and I can't deal with this character anymore. So we need to fix this somehow. Maybe you have some suggestions or I have some suggestions. So, but you know what? I'm not going to run for that character anymore. You can have the character make a, you know, a sacrifice of self and re restore the stats to a much more manageable set of stats. Whatever the two of you can agree upon, I would advise, you know, 24 or less is within the realms of what D&D &D accepts. Anything beyond that, it's just sheer ridiculous in my opinion and that sacrifice could go towards something else years ago when we moved from second edition to third edition there was a conversion chart and they they had this sliding scale that oh well if you've got an 18 percentile strength your strength is going to increase you know respectively so my character had an 1886 or 1889 strength well, that should have had me at a 22 or a 23 strength. And Dave was like, no, I'm not allowing that at all. I said, fuck you, Ted. You're not being stronger than an ogre. You're elf. <laughs> so I was like, okay, well, can I... I, I think we had a sentient tree that was a, a shrine to my god, goddess, in town. Well, I bestowed that strength upon the tree, the Trent, whatever it was. And I got to keep my 18 strength. You know, I was like, yay, you know, I, I got to, to, to carry forward. And we came to terms together. I, I wasn't giving any leeway. I was told, no, you're not having higher than an 18. But I said, oh, well, can we do this so that technically my character got something out of it? Ted Even, negotiated a, a compromise. <laughs> and, you know, it was fine and it worked for our world. But, you know, the Dave told me elves are not going to be stronger than an ogre without you know, something really behind it. And it not, was not just because we switched editions anyway, you know, like th there would have to be in game story elements that make that make this happen. But again, a lot of this stuff really can be solved by just having a discussion and talking with your player players. And, you know, you sometimes, you know, you've learned a lesson from some things that go wrong in your game and you've grown as a GM go and you've learned that like, well, there's just certain things I'm not going to allow now. And, and you, you have to realize, you know, what those limits are. You know, maybe you're going to be more, be careful about what you place in your game. And then, like, you know, like in this instance, it was doubly compounded because not only was the luck blade put there for, with the wishes, they were then able to acquire other magic items, uh, and which would have been okay with they would have been if it would have acquired a lengthy quest and would have been really difficult to do, and they would have had to convince their party to go along with it as well, because it sounds like it was like one person was like keeping all the rewards anyway uh, in this instance. So then you could have also at the same time have pressing matters in the world that really needed to be attended to, and you could have maybe tried to siphon off some wishes that way as well. So these are, these are definitely all things. And again, obviously you can't go backwards once you've done things they are kind of done. You have to go forward and go, well, what, what can I do here? Use this as a, as a lesson for being careful about what you, what you give out and what you're allowing. Uh, not everything that's in a Dungeon Master's Guide is going to exist in your world. Not all characters are going to be able to have access to that knowledge. So did the player meta to get some of that stuff? Did, you know, did they do lengthy research to find out that there are books that could increase their physical superiority and then, you know, went and did these quests? So use it as a stepping stone. Become a better DM because of, you know, these things that are, are going to happen. And just... As a DM, be aware of what you're going to allow in your game so that you can prevent situations like this. So as always, guys, in the comments, we'd love to hear your advice and see what kind of suggestions you can make for Kalen with this GM 911. While you're at it, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Or you can share your awful wish stories that have happened in your game. Don't forget to check us out over on Facebook. So until next time, stay nerdy.